Hello there. Today's adventure sees me on the River Earn. No surprise there. It's also raining. Again, no surprise. However, I've got some awesome news for you. It is special news. You'll have to stay tuned till you find out what it is. Roll the intro. Still raining. I'm still within that hour. I've only really uh, started fishing. So I'm throwing bait up feeders. 40 gram bait up feeders. They are holding the bottom without a problem. And the third cast, then I had a little roach. In the mix today, it's, a, it's basically a bag of leftovers. I found a, a bag of old Census Lake. I don't know how long it's been uh, in the shed, but it's been there, so... I basically used all of it. Half a bag of Sonia Bates Black Roach. And half a bag of Sonia Bates Brame. I've mixed it so it's kind of dry. Here's very deep where I'm fishing. If you know this, you'll know this. I think you come to Northern Ireland to fish the urn. This stretch is always used in matches. It's called the viaduct. You know, it goes right down this field. But I'm, you know, fishing peg four because I'm lazy. The, mat, the section starts up there past the bridge. It comes right down and goes right the way down to those, uh, past those bushes. I was going to go on to Balnalek, but apparently it wasn't fishing that well on Sunday. And there was quite a lot of boat traffic, so I decided to give it a miss. And come here. You've seen me fish here before. I fished for pike here. Uh, I blanked that day, so already we're off to a better start than the pike fishing day, so result. The only issue with this place is the peace and quiet gets disturbed by a bridge, which is that behind you. It will just ruin your pleasure all day, because I don't know, I think every car in Fermanagh decides to hit it when I come down here and fish. So I'm hoping that I get a few, hoping that I get some decent roach and perch today maybe. But in reality I'll take anything that swims. It gives the rain to fizzle out around about midday. So after that it gives it to be overcast but not not as rainy. So I'll just fish through the rain and the drizzle. And I'll see what else today brings. The river is flowing that direction, but at the minute 40 grams is holding the bottom, so it's not flowing that hard. Like I say, this stretch of the river is, it is very deep. And I'm just fishing literally kind of in the middle. I'm fishing 25 turns the handle. So... A reel that winds nearly 90 centimetres by that by 25. I'm sure somebody in the comments will do the math and tell me exactly how far I was fishing, but... But I'm sure that we'll... Uh find it if there's anything out there today. I have decided to mix up some floating maggots and use this. It's basically, it's like a coconut cell flavoured goo. It's made by Mainline. I've used it before and it's did well. I've actually used it for tench. It's done really well for tench. 
That's my floating maggots. Making floating maggots is dead easy. You just basically take a tub, cut the hole out of the middle of it, put your maggots in it, a little squirt of your additive, and then a little bit of water, just enough water to cover them, and they start to suck in the air to make them buoyant. But we will see if they are doing the job or not doing the job. Fishing a 3 foot 7 pound fluorocarbon tail to a size 10 Guru feeder special. Three maggots, a 40 gram Guru bait up feeder. Feeding a mix of dead maggots and some caster in it. I just do this for the first maybe hour and a half to get some bait into the water. If I get some bait down there, hopefully the fish will start munching and then I'll get some decent weights, but let's see first, shall we? Just a nice easy flick in front of me. That's me on the bottom now, so that's me fishing. So, are we all tired of the Covid crap yet? Are we all piss bored of how it's turned some of the uh, little huddlers out there into full blown knobs? You know the sort, the sort of people that would walk past a, a smoking area outside a bar and, and then complain that people are smoking? That sort of person. The more I kind of read the news, the more and more I just kind of think that's enough news for me. You know, there's only so much news you can take. Now, before anyone out there goes, oh, well, you're just a typical Daily Mail reader. Actually, no. If I see a, if I see a article about something, then I look at what the Daily Mail would say, look at what the Guardian would say, and somewhere in the middle, there's the truth. You know, one would put a political bias on one side, one would put a political bias on the other side. But somewhere in the middle, that's where you find what's actually happening. But the same article that kept popping up was how the Ministry of Defence is telling the seniors that the military has to get rid of lad culture. Now, I don't know exactly what lad culture is, but I do know that morale at the moment in the foreign forces 
Well, if it gets any lower, they're going to have to start digging. We have a thing in the forces, or we used to have a thing in the forces, when I was in the forces. It was very black humour, gallows humour. You know, you, you laughed at the fucking horrible things. You know, there's a, there's a movie out there called Kajaki. It's about the parachute regiment guys who are in Kajaki Dam in Afghanistan. And one of the sergeants steps in a landmine and blows off his foot. When he's in hospital, his friends bring him a, a pirate patch and a blow-up parrot and a, and, a, and a monthly subscription to Readers Weekly or something like that there to take the piss. Now, I'm sure people out there would go, oh, that's terribly cruel and that's awful. That's comedy. It's what we do. You know, one of the channels I watch on YouTube is uh, Lunkers TV. He's an American guy that does fishing, blah, blah, blah. Fishing, hunting, all that sort of stuff. One of his friends is a guy that was in Iraq and he got badly burned. Horrible burn injuries. And his nickname is Crispy. Now, if somebody said that to a normal person, they'd probably be horrified. But to somebody that's been in the forces, and the American Armed Forces isn't too much different to the British Armed Forces. You know, that's a nickname. That's a way of dealing with stress and hard things. You know, the Armed Forces community and the veterans community more so, you know, they kind of feel isolated enough. I know living in Northern Ireland, it can feel very, very isolated. And there's times where you don't. See, like on a job application, you wouldn't put down armed forces veteran. You wouldn't put it down at all because it would kill out. It would kill the job straight away. You just wouldn't get it. There's meant to be a thing called the Armed Forces Covenant. It's not here. It doesn't exist in Northern Ireland. That brings me to uh, the hat that I wear. Not this hat, the, fur, the woolly hat with all the patches. Uh, one of my friends, uh, he's from the south, Catholic fella, good guy. You know, was kind of laughing at somebody else, saying, oh, well, that guy is just a, a, a this, that, and the other, because of the hat that I have. It's like, okay. I'd imagine that that human being's quite the expert on all the books that he's read just by the bloody cover. If anyone talks to me about a given subject, I'll give them a given answer. I'll give them what I think. It's what we do in a civilised society. We talk to each other. We don't walk up and punch people in the face just because they have a different idea to us. You know, I, I love living in the United Kingdom. It's one of the most beautiful places in the world. And to see people saying that, that it's that it's this racist hellhole, that talking it down really bums me out. Because it isn't a racist hellhole. The British police aren't out, you know, night sticking the black people just because they're black. You know, this incident where the, the Olympic the Team UK, their Team GB athlete was driving up the wrong side of the road speeding and wouldn't stop for the cops who then said that the cops profiled her and then to top it all off Dick in charge of the Met Police pulled the rug out from under our officers and apologised it's not how you place a nation you don't pander to people Just because some subset of an ethnic minority decides that I want to be treated specially, that's not how you police a country. And saying that doesn't make me a racist. It doesn't make me a bigot. It doesn't make me sectarian. It just makes me honest. A few moments later. That was good. 
I had a boat trailing another boat followed by two jet skis come ripping through and that kind of made everything stop. Magic, isn't it? So while we still have a bit of a, a lull in the, uh, the action, I've had three roach. They're all right size, but nothing to go and do a dance in the field about. I'm going to show you how to use one of these. This is a Stonfo hook tire. You can see that I've already attached the hook. This is a size 12 Guru Feeder Special. It has been, you just basically slip it in there and you use this wheel to tighten it up. That means it's tight in the, uh, the little teeth, the little jaws there. And then I'm going to use my chosen leader material, which is 025mm 7, 7 pound Guru fluorocarbon. Take a length of it and put this end down somewhere so you have your fluorocarbon. I'm using fluorocarbons because it's a bit thicker and hopefully it stays up in the water column that bit longer so it drifts down. I'm going to tie a four foot tail so when the feeder hits the bottom there's four feet of up, in the, up in the water column there's the baits and it's just going to flutter down. So you take your stonfo, take your length of line, hook it behind this hook, this little, this little circle thing, a little bit of wire. So it's like this. You then take the tag end and fold it down. You know, this is a whole lot easier to do once I've... So you have it folded down, then you just start to twist. In fact, let me just do that again. It's thing of fluorocarbon, you can pull it kind of straight again. So you wrap it around the loop, the top end. So you've got the two ends like this, then you just fold it and start to wind. Start to twist. So there you have it, you've twisted it up the shank of the hook, and it's, it's come off again. Balls! Let's try it for a third time, shall we? Right, so you're wrapping it around the shank, the, the the hook, and you take this tag end that's hanging down below it, thread it back through this little eye, and then push down. Now you can pull this tight, and there you have it. You have your knot tied to your hook. Trim the tag end. And that is how you tie line to a spade end hook. Now I know that that's not the most perfect way of showing you. But you're going to have to do, deal with what I'm doing here. It's pissing with rain and I thought I'd show you how to tie it. <laughs> On the end, without the hook, you just do a figure of eight loop. And trim the tag end. So there you have it, a four foot hook length. That's going on now.
you'll have to sort that hook and put that out put that somewhere out of the road. I'll just put it there, so it's hanging on the edge, so it's not in anybody's way. There you have it. If you were a fish, you'd be all on that, like tramp on hot chips. Well, to have your attention, check the old YouTube thing. I noticed that there's over 50% of the people that watch my videos aren't subscribed. Well, this is your chance, you non-subscribers. I want you to take your hand and put it on your mouse and go down, click subscribe, click the bell. I don't know what the bell does, but give it a click anyway. And all you people that are subscribed, give me a thumbs up and a comment and I'll get around to answering them. Helps me out. I still can't believe that the, the channel is uh, sitting at uh, 1,930 something people. I can't believe there's that many people out there that would that enjoy watching the crap I come out with. But this is my chance to say thank you to all my subscribers for the support. Thank you to everybody who bought badges, not badges, stickers. I had a, a run on stickers, I had, had to get like nearly 200 of them printed and they're nearly all gone. <laughs> I didn't believe people would want, you know, stickers with my channel logo. But the support means an awful lot to me, it's, uh, the YouTube thing's been, been generally a positive experience and I'm kind of enjoying that. So this is a, a thank you from me to you for subscribing, leaving comments and all that uh, good stuff. It's only around about 10 o'clock in the morning. I'm actually surprised to see as many boats on the river this early. But you just have to deal with them. I know I've done a bit of, you know, kind of um, ranting in this video. I've only caught three fish, it's all gone dead. I decided to chuck in some some of those with all the loader stuff, so just to try and kickstart the swim again. But oh well. I'm in the great outdoors, in beautiful county for man in Northern Ireland, fishing on the river Lern. The world famous River Urn.
This is bringing me to my big news, the exciting news. Yes, the big exciting news. This week, I am finally getting the keys to the new palace to Scobie. After three months worth of delays and uh, endless back and forth with the uh, legal teams, it's finally looking like it's going to happen. It looks like I'm going to get the uh, the keys on Wednesday of this week. So that means I'm going to get my own garage, which is going to be phenomenal. I'm going to have a place where I can store all my own all my fishing gear. I'm going to have a place where I can put everything up on shelves. It's going to be sexy good. I'm also hopefully, you know, once we get moved in, get everything kind of moved into the, into the house, move out of where we're moving now. I have until the end of July to vacate where I'm living now. Excuse me, so it's not that much. We don't have to do everything right away this second. So we can move out nice and slowly. Moving into the house. This obviously means that my angling time might just be eaten in two. So there might be a little delay in video content for this channel. But it's okay. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just moving house. You know, you're going to have to give me some wiggle room. Moving house. It's a big thing. After, I, I hated renting. To me it just felt like you were taking your money that you'd worked your arse off for all month and uh, setting it on fire. I hated that. So now this is the property ladder thing. This is me on the property ladder with my wife. and The big plans are, you know, move into the house. Make the house a home. This means a lot of decorating, a lot of painting. Means you know we've got we've got a list of stuff that we have to do, and it seems each time my wife talks about it that wee bit, that list of jobs gets a bit longer. So, good times ahead. I'm also hoping. Hoping, if BT tells me the truth, that my uh, man cave slash garage will have internet access as well. So hopefully, it then becomes a place where I can do live stream vlogging from. You know, it's, it's impossible to do like a vlog sitting in a living room whilst your other half wants to watch The Only Way is Essex or some other pish on TV. So, big news ahead, big things coming, and anyone that can, anyone that says moving house is a stressful experience, I can fully 100% back that up, because Jesus wept, it's been, it's been, COVID-19 just delayed us by three months, we should have been in the property by the start of April, it's now middle of July you know and all that delays were you know, I don't understand why there was delays I don't understand why the lawyers took so long you know and thankfully the lawyer that we have is a good guy you know he found out that the, there was some things with the house that, that in the searches like the surveys and shit and he was like get building control in there and get that signed off and so thankfully he was he's kind of on the ball and everything we're moving in, you know, there shouldn't be any nasty surprises. But I'm thoroughly looking forward to it. Nice bungalow, real nice estate, good people for neighbours.
quite an extensive driveway, which means that we'll be able to get the wife's car, my van, plus the boat, all in the driveway without no shenanigans. And it also means, because I'm finally moving into my house, and I'm finally going to have somewhere that I can do actual work, like where I can store tools and actually do stuff, I get to do the refurb of the boat. The boat's going to get completely redone, rip out the floors, put new lockers in, re-carpet it. I'm wanting the batteries and the fuel to be kind of put in their own compartments so that they're out of the way. Now obviously I have to work with what I have. It's only an aluminium scene of. It isn't the fucking HMS, you know, Queen Elizabeth. So I have to maximise the space that I have to get the most out of it. But because now I have my own garage, I can do all this stuff. So uh, look forward to a future video on on the re, re, re basically rebuilding, tarting up the boat. So good news, eh? So, that's the end of another adventure. Not an awful lot to show you. Is, you know, I think it's like five, four or five roach, but I'll let you see them in now. There you go. Four roach for the full four hours. Wow. Hopefully when I get back to fishing, there's more fish turn up.